Well, I've just been enjoying a nice cup of coffee, and it gave me an idea as to why C1 V1 equals C2 V2 when you're working out the concentrations of solutions upon dilution. Okay. There's my coffee. And I want you to imagine that I've added a spoonful, one teaspoon of sugar to my coffee. So there's a known amount of sugar in my coffee. However, if I then take my coffee and I pour it into a bucket and fill that bucket up to the top so my coffee would sit in the bottom but then we're going to fill the rest of the bucket up with water How much sugar is in that bucket of water? Well, I added one teaspoon of sugar to my coffee and I've only added water to the bucket. So there is still only one teaspoon of sugar in the bucket. Now, in chemistry, we don't deal with teaspoons. We tend to deal with grams, milligrams. However, because of the molecular weight difference between molecules, in this case the sugar molecules and uh, a teaspoon of something else, working in grams isn't enough either. So we need to work in moles. And we say that the moles of sugar at the beginning, so let's call this volume 1 and concentration 1. And we'll call this volume 2 and concentration 2. The number of moles at the beginning, so the moles at position 1, is equal to the concentration multiplied by the volume. And then you can, you can divide by 1,000 depending on what units you're using for volume. But over here, moles at the end after the dilution is equal to concentration times the volume. But I've just told you that the amount of sugar or the number of moles of sugar at the beginning is the same as at the end. So we can combine these two equations because the moles of 1 equals the moles of 2. So you end up with C1 V1 over 1000 equals C2 V2 over 1000. The 1000 simply cancel out, so you're left with, which gives you ultimately C1 V1 equals C2 V2.